What's happening, Assassin's Creed fans? As uh, most of you know who were here from day one, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is pretty much over. There's nothing left to do unless you're going to go back and, you know, redo all the things you've already done, revisit it in a new game plus as a powerhouse with all your ability points, etc., etc. Uh, it kind of sucks that we have to wait until the end of 2020 to play another Assassin's Creed game. So here are 10 things that I know of that they should have done, Ubisoft that is, what they should have done in order to keep us busy until then and not playing other games that are uh, pretty popular or pretty wild. Uh, so here's my list and let me know whether you agree, disagree, or I missed anything. So in at number 10, for me at least, they should have given us multiplayer. I know this would be a bone of contention for some people, especially with all the uh, XP twerks and everything that we had. Um, honestly, a multiplayer that is not affected by anything that happens in the single player game, that would be ideal. And honestly, that would keep us in the game. We practice our skills that we learned from the main player game, the single player, and then we would apply those to the multiplayer games. Just like games of old where we're, you know, just trying to kill each other back and forth. Uh, one is the target, one is the uh, assassin. That was actually kind of fun. Going up on those leaderboards was pretty big and a lot of people really did have a good time with it. So, especially as large as Greece is, you have plenty of areas to choose from where you could actually go about this map and... You know, like, I mean, obviously, I'm not in focus and I'm trying to kill somebody over here in Lesbos. Well, I mean, like, you would have different areas all around this map where you could play. There would be so many maps and areas to learn that you would never really get tired. I mean, I, I think multiplayer is a missed opportunity, and that is something you will hear me throw around in a lot of my videos, including this one, where I'm looking at things that, you know, Ubisoft really should have included. So, that was number 10. They should have included multiplayer. In at number 9, they should have given us a real story creation mode. I mean, you know, I don't want to knock anybody's story creator or their creations. It's not your fault. They really should have given us way more tools. And as you can see there really are less and less of these story creations popping up because Ubisoft really, they put a limit as to what we can do and how we can do it. And not just that, they also kind of built it lazily so that we, the players, could create our own stories to keep this game going. That, I think, was the business marketing plan that they had. You know, just... Let the players run rampant, let them create stories, let them do their wildest dreams, and then that way, you know, they don't have to build any more content. Which, again, very lazy. But, with all the controversy surrounding it, you know, like, I mean, people aren't even really doing these story creations anymore. Um, you can't give us the powers of a god and then take it away. You can't give us something and then not let us run with it, especially with like the XP farms. Now, XP farms aside, you really limit us as to what we can actually do here. I'm pretty sure there are people who would have made like really advanced and wild stories that would have blown us away and everything, but the tools were limited. Um, what we could and could not do was limited. And there really wasn't a good reward system. So it's really not something that, you know, the average player would want to do. The average player would rather stick to all these other official storylines and whatnot. So that that way they could accomplish what they need, namely grinding out that XP. 
Uh, these story creations don't grind any more XP. They don't really give you a lot of XP. They, re they really don't give you a lot of reward. Honestly, it would have been great to have like materials or armor or something like that. And they just dropped the ball on this. So, you know, Ubisoft, again, that's one more thing that you could have done. Would have had this game going for a long time. We would have been creating our own stuff, having fun with our own stuff. And, uh, you know, maybe some people would have got interested in, and built their own stuff. But, you know, it's what I come to expect for some reason. So in at number eight, another bone of contention, something that people will disagree with. They should have had more present day. I know that the game is all about what happened in the past, but there are things that are going on in the present. The whole reason for the existence of the series is the present day. The story is the present day. The story is there is a problem in the present day and we're looking towards the past to see how we can repair it, which is exactly what we do even now. Um, you know, the present day really would have given us a lot of like details as to like what's going on, maybe even the future of the series, maybe, you know, like what, what we're going to do next, why we're going to do what we're going to do next, things like that. But instead... We just remain mostly in the past, and again, this is not really an Assassin's Creed game. It's some kind of like rogue Spartan game where you play as a Spartan that doesn't fight the way a Spartan does. It's kind of weird, you know? It really was weird. Um, if we had a little more activity in the present day, we would have seen like a little more as to what's going on. Uh, and I don't mean like with the DLCs. The DLCs got confusing because... We had no idea what was happening in the present day in, like, the DLCs. But uh, this game, I mean, you don't even know what this game is about. When you initially play it, it's just about Cassandra looking for her family. That's the game. That's what the game is about. You just happen to stumble across and find Atlantis. And Atlantis was the whole reason that the present day was going on. They were apparently looking for Atlantis. Because in the present day, in the beginning of the game, go ahead and replay it. They never show what you're doing. They never show the point of the game. And now you know the point of the game. So yeah, we should have had more present day. Besides, I would have loved to see uh, Layla eating a couple of tacos. That would have been great. So in at number seven is something that would have made immense sense. Give us another DLC or two. I mean, you took our DLCs. We had Legacy of the First Blade. You broke it down into three different installments. And there were weeks between each installment. And I understand why they did it. They did it to, like, stretch out the life of the game. And that was great. Same thing with Fate of Atlantis. They took Fate of Atlantis and they stretched it out across three games. And again only so that that way they could create, you know, like the illusion that the game is lasting longer. All right, Secrets of Greece was free DLC that they gave us. Every once in a while they gave us a, a story. It was usually anywhere from like 30 minutes to like an hour. Um, in the beginning they were mostly fetch quests, but towards the end they, they got a lot better. There was a lot more story and reasoning behind them. And The Blind King was actually one that we had gotten originally if you'd gotten a special edition of the game. And you could also purchase it off the Ubisoft store uh, if, well, not the Ubisoft store itself, but um, off of the, uh, their point system. You could have bought it there if you had enough of their little token coins or whatever. So, you know, while all those were actually pretty good and they, you know, like gave us more in terms of what the story was there is still so much opportunity and so much money to be made for Ubisoft if they had given us another DLC. Okay, I know we already bought the season pass. Season pass is done. I know people would be upset uh, if they pulled like what Destiny did where you got the DLCs and then all of a sudden they made quote unquote un expansion packs like, uh, you know, the, the Fallen King and... Uh, the uh, the other thing of iron, I, I, it escapes me right now. Anyway, uh, with an expansion pack, I'm pretty sure people would have been mad. But 
honestly, at this point, if you make it cheap enough, give it to us for five bucks a thing. You know, like it, make it make it like eight hours or something, ten hours of gameplay or something with a couple extras thrown in. Then I could see like maybe you know per DLC people paying that and stuff like that. You know, it would be it would be a, a decent. I know it, you know for some people they they may believe that that does not you know offset the value of the work that ubisoft has done but you know at this stage in the game i'm I'm pretty sure that they could take that hit with all the money that they've made off of people buying certain packs and uh boosters and things like that so again uh a, another dlc or so that would have been great So in that number six, I would have liked to have seen some kind of hidden prizes. Um, we do have areas where there's legendary chests that are just laying about. And, uh, you know, that has like some special stuff for you to open up. And there are the, uh, the you know, ancient knowledge, the tablets, the uh, steels that they leave you alone with that, you know, you're supposed to go and find and whatnot. The, you know, give you an extra ability a point or two. Those actually are pretty good, but I'm talking about like actual prizes. There are some places that you could actually hide stuff and just imagine if just, you know, we explore a certain area, you know, maybe and, and the community would get together. We'd explore a certain area and boom, hey, we found something here. This was not here. You know, it has a brand new legendary weapon. It has something that we haven't seen before. Things like that. Or even if they would have done what they did in uh, Assassin's Creed Origins, where you completed the, uh, if you completed a new game plus, you got a new uh, clothing set. If you completed the uh, Discovery Tour, you also got something new for Senu. You got like a, another skin for Senu, and it would have been cool to have skins for, uh, or for for Icaros. That would have been kind of wild if we would have done something like that. You know, like little goofy things like that. I know that they did have, you know, prizes as far as engravings go, where like if you, you know, uh, acquire a certain piece of armor or a weapon, you get engravings. Or if you uh, perform a certain amount of tasks, you kill 50 animals, you get a, uh, a, a certain engraving and things like that. And that's all well and good, but it would have been even cooler to have something that, you know, you just really had to work towards. Not something ridiculous, you know, don't give me, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, something like Alexios or Cassandra are nude if you kill 999 goats and find the uh, Cyclops' eye. Hint, hint. Yeah, that would have been wild. But, uh, you know, let's do something normal. Let's do something that, that would have been absolutely fun. Something, uh, you know, like like hidden areas or coordinates or even, you know, like do something where you've got like a, a Twitter account or, you know, Facebook page that Ubisoft has for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And, you know, they just give you like weird coordinates and you have to uncover the longitude and latitude. You do the work, you discover the thing. I think things like that would have been fun, you know, kind of like scavenger hunts or something. But again, you know, there, there were so many missed opportunities in this game and it's just not fair. So in at number five, how about a little more challenge? How about other play modes? How about a survival mode where you only have one life and if you die, that's it, it's over. Something like that, you know? If you thought Nightmare was pretty wild, if you thought that that was just like pretty insane and you know, like it's kind of like tough to play through it, just imagine if you only had one life and then Give us something really cool. Make it worth our while. Not just, you know, that we're playing through it like that. Let us, at the end, get, like, a special prize or something. That would be cool, too. I know I'm all about these special prizes and whatnot, but honestly, like, if you did something like that, it would actually make the game a little more interesting. It would actually be kind of wild because here we are, like, playing through and doing some, like, outstanding stuff. And for what? You know, just to challenge ourselves, but... You know, uh, for people who are a little shy, who don't want to, like, do something like that, hey, there's an opportunity to get something. There's something in it for you. That would really draw a crowd. I think that that would be amazing. And I think that's something that they should have considered, honestly.
So here's something else that would have been fascinating to discover, and it goes along the lines of DLC. Where the heck has Cassandra been for the past couple thousand years? I mean, by the end of the uh, first arc, the main story arc, when Layla reaches Atlantis, she uncovers that Cassandra is still alive. So what has Cassandra been doing all that time? What has she been doing for like 2,400 plus years? Like... Where was she? It would have been awesome to actually see her maybe travel the world. Uh, you know, maybe give us like little story modules where like she runs into the other assassins or she kind of guides them or something. You know, would have been something to see her like kind of flirting with Ezio and, you know, like uh, uh, just giving him like a couple of pointers or something. Or giving Cleopatra the hidden blade to give to Aya. I mean, things like that would have been, like, immense. They would have been outstanding. Like, why don't we have stuff like that? Why did we not see anything like that? I think that that would have been the perfect DLC. Maybe make us, uh, you know, stories of Cassandra instead of, like, a, a, you know, like, Lost Tales of Greece. Make a Lost Tales of Cassandra, set it up there and whatnot. Maybe make it, you know, even if it has to take place in Greece, you reskin a couple of things, you know, or maybe you do like, like I said, you do tiny little 30 minute modules of every assassin that we've ever played as in every Assassin's Creed game and what effect she secretly had in guiding the Assassin's Brotherhood all the way to Desmond. I think that would have been outstanding. Again, another missed opportunity. So in at number three for me, honestly, would have been challenging the gods themselves. Now, you kind of do that with the, uh, the DLCs. You kind of sort of challenge Hades. You kind of sort of challenge, uh, you know, Poseidon and stuff like that. I hope I said that again correctly. Maybe not. But anyway, um, there are different things that you ended up doing in this DLC where you could actually fight gods. But... They weren't really epic god battles. If you see Assassin's Creed Origins, which is the game that came before Odyssey, they have a god's battle where you battle Anubis, uh, Sobek, and uh, uh, I can't remember her name, but uh, she was like the cat god. I want to say Sekhmet, but um, hopefully I'm not pronouncing that incorrectly but anyway you battle those three gods and originally in that game there was a fourth god that you were going to battle but they scrapped it and i don't know why they scrapped it but anyway i mean that would have been great i would have loved to have battled zeus uh hades anybody on like some kind of one-on-one -on -one kind of battle or maybe even have it like a, a weekly thing or something that would have been cool you know maybe as a community challenge if enough of us defeat this god's uh, you know, maybe we get a prize, which is the same thing that they did in Origins, and it worked. I honestly would have loved to see something like that. This is ancient Greece, after all. Why not make Alexios or Cassandra their very own Heracles and tell their story? Because honestly, if you think about it, they were pretty normal people, but they just had immense strength and everything because they were genetically enhanced thanks to the Isu. So that's why they could leap off buildings with a single bound and not kill themselves and stuff like that. But it would have been really cool to see something further like that where it actually bears a sort of uh, either Amazonian or Heracles uh, theory or story behind it. It begins the myth. The myth started with them. That would have been awesome. Missed opportunity. That's the key word here, or the key phrase. In at number two, I have some kind of adventures on the high seas. Now, as you know, the whole world of Greece that was created in Odyssey is pretty much, I mean, there is a ton of ocean here, a ton of it. So besides having like naval ship battles and stuff like that, why didn't they do other things with it? Why didn't they add like a Kraken or something crazy like that that you could battle on the water? 
some sort of something. I think it would have been crazy. Maybe every once in a while, the king of the sea just gets angry and decides to, like, come up. That would have been a god battle or something. It would have been crazy. But instead, we do all these, like, little naval missions and everything. You know, you attack a, a merchant boat for, you know, Drachme and some ore or... You know, you go, you battle something else. It's all these, like, goofy little things that, like, you could do. And, you know, while they are fun, while, you know, like, they, they do have their place, I just really think that it would have been great. It would have been epic. Just as I'm sailing along the sea over here, out of nowhere, a giant kraken or a giant octopus, a giant squid, a giant something attacks me. Maybe I accidentally come across like a shipwreck and on that shipwreck I hear a siren song and there are sirens that have lured that ship to its doom and I have a problem where my crew is trying to steer towards those sirens and then maybe I have to jump off my boat and go and kill those sirens in order to prevent anybody else from falling under their spell again. I would have loved to see something like that. It would have been a great point in the game. It would have been something fun to continuously do. Maybe link us to all the other players. Maybe other players can see that, like, you know, there's sirens there and to watch out for it or to go and attack it. Or maybe I let somebody know that, hey, the Kraken was here and you can go after it or you could leave it alone. You could steer clear. It's up to you. So many things they could have done, man. Now, in at number one, I think that this would have been absolutely amazing. We already playing as whichever of the characters that you play as the Eagle Bearer. Uh, you've put in anywhere from like 300 to like a thousand plus hours depending on your gameplay style and what you were looking to accomplish. All right. But like in this case, in my case, I played as Cassandra because according to Ubisoft, Cassandra is the canon character. What if after I played Cassandra's story while waiting for the DLC to come out, etc., etc. I was able to play as Alexios. What if I could put in another 300 to 1,000 hours of gameplay playing as Alexios? No, not as the Eagle Bearer, but as Deimos the Chosen One. Imagine that. Imagine you play his side of the story. You play where he was lost when thrown off the cliff, you play where the uh, cult of Cosmos found him, raised him in order to be this demigod. Just imagine that. Imagine his side meeting Cassandra, dealing with all this doubt. They, they, no, I'm Deimos. I, I'm supposed to do this, that, and the other thing. I'm going to rule the world. I'm this, that, and the other thing. Just imagine that for a second. What kind of impact would that have? That would have made for an amazing game. And the thing is, it would have been the other side of the coin of Cassandra. Whereas Cassandra could have been the eagle bearer, he could have been the chosen one. We could have had so much gameplay. And then, you know, maybe not even give us the, the same DLCs and and. You know, like he does whatever in the DLCs, that would be kind of like ridiculous because he obviously is, you know, Deimos. He's supposed to be evil. Even though, depending on the ending that you get with Cassandra, you can bring him back to the side of good, things of that nature. Maybe it even mirrors that. And then you figure out what he's doing, you know, like as he's playing, as, as uh, you know, Cassandra's handling all this other stuff. Again, it just would have been a wild ride. It was a missed opportunity. We we could have got so many more game hours out of this. And maybe it would have even taken us all the way straight to uh, 2020. To the end of 2020 when the next Assassin's Creed would have came out. Plus, 
maybe they would have thrown us some extras. You know, maybe we would have gotten specific gear or weapons just for him instead of using Cassandra's gear and weapons that we got. Separate engravings, a separate sort of gameplay. And then maybe on the new game plus, you could switch them out and alter it and make it something totally different. They, Again, you heard me say it several times. You know what I'm going to say. Missed opportunity. It's unreal. Absolutely unreal. Anyway, those were 10 things that I thought of and that some of you have uh, even spoken with me about. 10 things that maybe Ubisoft could have done to extend the life of Odyssey all the way to the end of 2020. Um, you know, a, a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of just misfires like the story creator mode, uh, things that they should have added that they didn't add, you know, things to like reward you, things to like really make you want to strive to continue to play. You know, they, they could have kept going with it. I, I really do feel that this could have got like a, a year or two and really gotten a lot of life squeaked out of it had they done certain things. Anyway, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Do you agree with my list? Do you think that there are some things that should be omitted? Do you think that you have maybe a couple of better ideas that should have been included? Let me know all that in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Let's debate. Let's discuss. Let's get into this. Other than that, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out an awful lot. And if you want to further help out the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Check out my about page. I have, uh, you know, details as far as uh, becoming a patron, donations, even uh, going through one of my sponsors, Beautiful Halo, where they sell clothing that actually looks like Assassin's Creed hoods, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, if you don't want Assassin's Creed only, they also have other video game merchandise, t-shirts, things like that. And if you don't want to run a rock around, blah, whoa, wow, that was kind of wild. If you don't want to walk around with a lot of uh, video game gear, then by all means, check out the other things they have. They also have regular clothing and it looks fantastic. Anyway, once again, I want to thank you all for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next one.